episode seven, Death's Hand in Mine. And it's your boy Icon with a Marvel television review for you going over that Agatha all along. And before we get started, because this was a good one, hit that notification bell, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, check out all my other videos. And let's get started, because this was actually by far the best episode of the entire season for me. And, you know, a lot of it also has to do with time travel, because I've said, if I've said it once, I've said it a million times. I love time travel based things. And if you can come up with a good way of doing time travel, you have already got me hooked. And the way that they did the time travel, the unofficial time travel in this particular episode, like, honestly, it made me like grin from like ear to ear. And I thought this shit was awesome. They did, however, the concept of the time travel, they did borrow it. I mean, it's still the same genre. They did borrow it from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because on an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., there was a girl, an, an, an inhuman child, who had the ability to see the future. She could see events from the future. And because she was a child and she couldn't really, like, talk or communicate the things that she was seeing, the stuff, whenever she would get these images in her head of future events, she would, like, write them down with crayon and coloring, and she would draw pictures. And like she would draw pictures of two people standing in the sand with a spaceship in front of them. And then that event would actually happen in real life. When the girl got older, when she was like a, like a grown woman, probably like in her 60s or whatever, she was seeing like past events. <laughs> so it was weird because the young version of her as a child and the old version of her as an adult woman, they were swapping memories back and forth because she was able to see things that you know, young her was seeing and, you know, young her was able to see things that old her was seeing. So to her, she's basically living her entire life in her mind. Like she knows things that are going to happen, especially in, like, in her life. And they did that here with Lilith. And I'm going to try my best to explain this <laughs> as good as possible. But before we get to the, uh, you know, to the deranged and the crazy, it actually, the episode starts with Agatha and with Teen or Billy, I guess we're calling him Billy. Uh, the two of them, they were the survivors because after Billy basically tried to bury everybody and Agatha pulled her way out of the abyss, the two of them are on their way to the next trial. While they're doing that, like they're having conversation. He's just like, oh, is Wanda really dead? And then she's like, yes, I don't know, maybe. So now they're basically saying that Wanda's not dead. And like I said before, if Wanda's not dead, that's perfectly fine. But when Wanda comes back, I swear to God, she better not be on the Avengers because she was the bad guy in Doctor Strange Part 2. <laughs> so now they get to... They get to the next trial. It was like a castle, like a Disney castle. And when they go into the castle, their appearance basically transforms them into the cast of Wicked. <laughs> Agatha looks like the Green Witch, which she said was modeled after her. And Billy kind of looked like the evil witch from Snow White and the Seven of the Seven Dwarfs. But this particular trial is a terror, a terror card reading. It's a terror reading, a real terror reading. And... Wanda and Billy, they're both trying to figure out the tarot cards and they're failing at it miserably. Agatha really doesn't give a shit about the tarot stuff. She's just like, oh, let's just keep putting cards on until we get the right ones. Billy's like, no, like you have to actually do this, but he's not really skilled at it. And while they're doing it, the ceiling is dropping and swords are falling out of the sky. So they got to hurry up. So now while they're doing that and they're trying to figure out the tarot, the, the tarot challenge and failing at it miserably, this now takes us to Lilith. And that was her name, Lilith. Like, how did I not remember that? So Lilith... She base all right, so this is the best way I can describe this. <laughs> so let's just say Lilith was born in the 50s, and when she was a teenager, a child, or wh wherever, whenever her powers manifested, her present conscience exists in the 50s, and then obviously in the 60s, the 70s, 80s, as she's living her life. There's her present mind, her present conscious. So let's just say for the sake of the explanation, she has one present conscience per decade. There's like her 80s version mind, her 90s mind, her 2000s, 2000s plus, blah, blah, blah. Because she has the power, because she has like the terror power, because she's like the gypsy or whatever, each one of her present time consciousness they're traveling to the different points of time. So like her 80s conscience keeps slipping to like the 50s. Her 60s conscience will go to the 2000s. Her 2000s conscience will go to like the 70s. And her, con her mind is constantly, her mind is constantly like shifting back and forth throughout the course of her entire life. 
So like the the 90s version of her will end up in the 50s as a teenager and she's sitting down talking to one of the women who was in her coven at the time and the woman is like oh which one are you and then she was like oh i'm the 90s one i was just opening up a tarot card shop and you know then the then the woman was like oh well tell me all about it and then that that version of her mind will leave and then like the 2000s one will show up and then she's just like oh you're the 2000s one so tell me what's going on in the 2000s and then she's just like oh everyone's dead <laughs> you know like my entire coven is dead and like they're all coming for us you know like the the 70s version was just you know, when, when the 70s version popped up she was just like, oh, you know, like, you all die because of, like, some illness and I couldn't save you. Like, the kid version of her, like, the 50s version of her, she ended up in the 2000s. And she was like, oh, you know, like, this is nice. I have a coven. I have a family. Like, we're on the witch's road. So, but the thing about it is whenever Lilith pops back into the consciousness where she's supposed to be. So if her 80s mind travels to different, you know, different decades and then her 80s mind returns to the 80s, she doesn't remember all the stuff that she did because her mind wasn't there. You know, so now to her, if she tells if she's if she's talking to me in the 80s and she says to me, "Hey Jarell, like you're a piece of shit." And then her 2000 her 2000s mind comes into the 80s and then she's just like, "You know, like I thought you were a piece of shit back then, but you and I eventually end up becoming, you know, like real good friends and you were the best person that I ever met in my life." Then when her 80s mind comes back, she's not even going to know she said all that because that was her future self that told me that. They do get to the point where we find out that both Lilith and Jen they fell th when they when they got buried, they ended up in like underground caverns, so they didn't really get buried. And then that's when Lilith had told Jen, she was just like, you know, I'm trying to put the pieces together. I'm trying to put my mind together. She said that like she remembered she remembered from like a previous version of her mind that 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 entered. She knows that Agatha and Billy are trying to do the challenge. And she said that. But she said, but I got to help them. And then she told she told Jen, she's like, I want you to come with me because you're my sister in the coven. And then Jen was like, all right, cool. And then they heard the screech with the seven, the, the, the sinister seven coming. So they tried to get the hell out of there. While they were trying to find Agatha and trying to find Billy, that's when that's when Lilith's current mind came back. And then she was just like, she was like, Jen, where are we going? She was like, well, we're on our way to go help Agatha, you know. And then she was like, well, why are you coming with me? And then she was like, because I'm your sister in the coven. And she was like, bitch, since when? <laughs> you know? And then that's when Jen was just like, okay, so you don't remember telling me that. She said, you did. She said, when you told me that, you also told me you weren't going to remember. So, you know, but, and the actress that plays Lilith, she came alive in this episode. Like, her personality was dialed up to like a thousand. There was also a moment where, the child version of herself ended up in to like the current version of herself. And then she ended up on the floor with Agatha standing over her. And then Agatha was like, woman, you almost got hit in the head with a sword. And so we were just like, so how the hell did Lilith and, you know, and Jen get into the room? Cause they're a part of the challenge now. Later on, we go back and we see the scene where Lilith and Jen actually made it into the challenge. And, you know, Jen still look fine. And while they were in the challenge, like Lilith is now there and she's like, yo, somebody fucked up the tarot card <laughs> reading. And then they were like, yeah, you were doing the tarot card reading before your mind blanked out. So now we're trying to get back on track. So again, what Lilith, so now Lil Lilith is keyed in now. She's just like, you know what? She said that my mind is coming back to me. I'm starting to remember things. Basically, we're all caught up now. Like, And, and, and when the episode started, it starts with her, with her falling out of the sky. So there was a version of herself that ended up into the future version of her that saw her falling from the sky. So now she knows she's going to fall from the sky at some point. But she's also locked into completing the challenge because now all the memories that she saw, things that she saw, where it was like Agatha in front of a three branch tree, Jen smiling in the corner, you know, like even Alex, when Alex tried to save her, there was even a moment where in episode three, Lilith had said to Alex, she was like, oh, don't try to save Agatha. And then, you know, and th but then that she, she still ended up doing it. So now Lilith is basically compiling all the memories, all the visions, everything that she saw throughout the course of her entire life from the time she got her power up until she dies or it's perceived that she dies. She finally put all those pieces together 
And then she realized, because everybody thought at first, Billy was the person who the trial was about. And then that's when Lilith was like, no. She said, now that my mind is clear and I see everything for what it is. She said, I see all the information, all the clues, all the pieces. She said, the trial is actually about me. So she puts the one card down for herself. And then, you know, one card for Jen, one card for Agatha, who's the troublemaker, Billy, who's on the journey. She ended up putting the terror cards together. Because now she knows exactly what's going to happen. Like, because, like, you know, I said, she... She put all the memories together from, you know, from the, from the dawn of time. So, you know, she's there now. She puts the she puts the tarot cards together, and then, you know, when she puts the final card on the table, Agatha slammed the final card on the table because she paused for a moment. They passed the trial. A doorway opened up, and the stairs opened up for them to escape into the next, you know, into the next trial. While they were doing that, that's when the Sinister Seven started showing up. But the reason why Lilith had paused because one of the memories that she did remember in the moment, which was part of the terror reading, was the card of death. And then she remembered Lady Death, which is Rio, the, you know, like the fine chick from, you know, that, that joined their team after the other girl, after Sharon died. Like, Rio is actually like Lady Death. She's the one, I guess, that poisoned Lilith's original coven, and she's the one that's coming after them and coming after them also. And then they asked Agatha, they was like, is this true? And she was like, yeah, but she's like, I like the bad boy. <laughs> Is, you know, so so now like they know that that Rio was really death and like she's coming for them. And then the Sinister Seven came into the room, and then that's when everybody ran up the stairs to try to escape. But then when Jen when Jen was gonna go in, she told Lilith to go, but she was like, No, Jen, you have to go because you're the sister in the coven. She's like, You're the, you're the way forward. She told Jen like you're because she saw a vision of Jen being the way forward. So Jen's gonna play a big role in this somehow. And then when Jen went through. Lilith closed the door behind her because she and then then Jen was like, no, what are you doing? Don't sacrifice yourself because she was in the room now with the Sinister Seven. The Sinister Seven was trying to kill her. But she said but she said before she did the tarot card read, she said that the tower, the card of the tower that they're in, she put the card, you know, she put the card right side up. But she said when you turn the card upside down, what it did, because remember, all those swords were on the ceiling trying to kill everybody. And when, when she turned the tower card upside down, it actually turned everybody in the room upside down. She grabbed onto the table to keep from falling, and the Sinister Seven basically fell into the ceiling, <laughs> and they were killed by all the swords. So Lilith ended up killing the Sinister Seven, which I guess was her revenge for them killing her coven <laughs> like back then. So she managed to defeat them but she couldn't hold on to the ledge herself and then she fell into the ceiling and then it's presumed that she landed on the swords and she died because she landed on the swords but we don't actually know that she died i don't obviously i don't think she dead like I, like she ain't dead alex ain't dead she'll be back and I think she even saw a vision of herself like surviving you know like the swords which is probably why like she had that look on her face at the end and then it showed a scene of like her teenage self like back in the 40s when she went to go sit and talk to one of her covenant, covenant members for the first time. And then she was like, oh, Lilith, how are you doing today? Tell me about, you know, tell me about time and space and everything. And then young Lilith basically just started having the conversation where she was telling her all the things that she saw as her mind was traveling throughout her own history. That was how the episode ended. And thank you for tuning in. I hope I explained that good. <laughs> so, no, this was dope. Like, I, I can't, like, I'm, I can't even front. This was dope. Like, the way they did her, the way they did her power, you know, for her to basically pass through different points of her time, different, different moments in her life. Like, you know, again, it, the, the tools she needed to pass the challenge existed throughout the course of her entire life. She just had to live her entire life. Like there were moments in her life where she needed to travel to the future in order to get those answers in the present. And her power, you know, came, came in perfectly for that. Like, yeah, she revealed that she was the one that put the stupid mute thing on Billy. That turned out to be nothing. Nobody cared. She basically told everybody what their role is in all of this. And now we're just going to wait and see what happens. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm down for it. Because like I said, now I want to know what's really going on around here. Let's share your questions, comments, and concerns. Let's continue to talk about it because we finally got the Lilith episode. So check out my other reviews because I got Superman and Lois up on my channel, which is really good. I got the Penguin up on my channel, which is still going strong. Loving me some Penguin. And that Laura Croft too rate which we will conclude the second half of that right now i also got my videos for new york comic con that's up on my youtube channel check out my new york comic con videos and we'll keep rolling on because we got some more stuff in the pipeline like i said this agatha shit is getting really good and i look forward to finishing it up with all of you so till next time guys so thanks for tuning in look out for the cards because they will predict your past present and or future and until next time we're out this bitch <laughs>